Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here in person at Accelerate 2023, which is Fortinet's annual user conference. I'm uh, joined here today by Corinne Chopin. You are the VP of Cybersecurity Strategy and uh, a whole bunch of other things, and I think what that really boils down to is that you're really the person that puts the CISO strategy together, correct? Correct. Yeah, so if you could just uh, maybe give a quick intro to yourself and uh, let me know why you're excited to be here at Accelerate. Thank you first for coming and joining us in this event. This event, as you can see in the background, is full with our customers and partners. What I personally enjoy is seeing everyone, talking to everyone, doing the challenges for configuring the product and see how everything works together, and mainly hear success stories of us as a community and how we help protect those organizations in the past and also moving forward. It's very inspiring to see all of those people who have like foot on the ground uh, doing their jobs. Well, it's an exciting time to be in security, but it's also kind of a scary time, right? There's, uh, there's no shortage of ransomware and different threats. And I know one of the things that Fortinet does, uh, which is pretty unique, is you guys uh, publish a regular threat landscape report, and you just had another one drop uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, what were some of the, the highlights in that? So those uh, threat landscape reports are actually generated by FortiGuard Labs, which has its own team of research. It's very unique to Fortinet, as you mentioned, that we have our own researchers in-house across all of the technologies that we offer. It. So well, you have a huge lab group. We so. have a yeah, huge yeah, yeah. lab. And those people are monitoring what we see in our product from telemetry, but they also work with a lot of industry leaders and groups, both in the enforcement force globally, to make sure that we bring data in and analyze it. You mentioned ransomware. We just celebrated 10 years of ransomware, and it's still one of the most successful tools today for attackers to come in. And they just keep perfecting it. Now you have wipers, not just ransomware. Uh, you have ransomware as a service that is pretty known as well. And we see a lot of in advancement in AI and uh, targeting of humans as well. So if you look at our incident response team or MDR team, they see a lot of those attack now bypassing some of the traditional products directly to your people, which is a big change. It is a big change, yeah. And, and actually, this, even the spoofing and stuff's gotten very, very good. John Madison, uh, your uh, CMO and head of product, uh, sort of jokingly talked about being able to create a fake voicemail from, uh, you know, from, uh, from your CEO to your CFO. And he, but I hear those stories all the time. I, I talked to a reseller the other day who um, was at a conference in Boston and put it on LinkedIn and shortly after that, uh, his, his CFO got an email saying, can you buy me a couple of Apple gift cards, send me the numbers because I want to give them to a customer. And Luckily, he said the CFO was too lazy to go buy him and said, go buy him yourself, which is the only way they really found out about it. But these things look legit today, don't they? Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, we also help them. Like, we share so much data everywhere. And with the right system as tool, the harvesting of this personal information is fairly easy. Executive also have it through merge and acquisition. The, as you purchase a company, you have to disclose a lot of those names and titles and role, which allow people to then track them on other places, on website or in personal, and create really targeted customers attack. The AI is actually adding to it, not only in voice, but you see it now in video, generating wrong data, you know, impersonating into people that they're not. So I do feel, and I think John mentioned it also in his session, the first thing you need to do is train your people. And yes, train yes. your people and the entire stack. Train your employees that this is happening. Train your executives. Some of these things are really good, though. They're, they're hard yes. to tell, yeah. They are. They are. I, I wish they can do our job for us soon. <laughs> well, uh, eventually, it'll just be you and I avatars. <laughs> this, right? so. Now, you did mention AI. So yes. let's open up Pandora's box here, right? I think one of the things that's changed over the last couple of months is all this talk about generative AI and chat GPT, right? It's a big topic conversation in every customer conversation I have. And one of, the, one of the questions I get, right, and so while it allows me to do cool things, you know, I was at Adobe Summit, you can create all this content on the fly, fraudsters can always also use it. And I don't think we've really talked about the impact to, to how fraudsters could benefit from it, but then also how companies can use it to fight this new threat. So what do you think the impact of ChatGPT and generative AI is going to be on security? So we have machine learning model in security for quite a long time. 
And we've seen AI acting on the attacker side for quite a long time as well. Yeah. They have been using it to create those polymorphic attack, and we have our own AI mechanism to be able to create signature against it that can identify variation of malware, identify stuff that doesn't look really normal. We use AI to automate a lot of processes, and we use it to harvest big amount of data. I believe that we will see it being used in the same way. Maybe slightly more AI training AI, uh, but I have to say, and I will take it out of the context of just chat GPT and think about drive, self-driving cars and other stuff that could be hacked as yes. well. Like, you know, if you start having AI managing so much of our life and creating so much interaction, you will have to protect the infrastructure of it, but also be able to identify thrusters faster. Yeah. Yeah, and I will say, uh, for people watching this, if you're a security pro who's resisted the use of AI in security, if the bad guys are using it, I don't know how you can protect yes. it. It's almost like fighting fire with fire, right? You can't use old school methodologies to fight AI-based fraudsters, right? I think that the, the benefit of AI is the speed that it provides you and the velocity of variation that it can generate in a short amount of time. And as human, we will not be able to move fast enough to address it with the tool that we have without bringing the same compute power and processing power and smartness into our own capabilities. So 100% agree. Yeah, all right, Karen. Well, this is Accelerate. You are Fortinet. You're renowned for having great products, right? And I mean, you have a product for everything, right? This, yes. That, uh, you just have to look at all the 40 products on the website. So uh, can you tell me, um, uh, well, first of all, actually, before we get to product, let's talk a little bit about uh, another thing that John talked about in his keynote, which was security convergence. This is a topic that you and a few other vendors have been talking about for a while. The coming together of um, multiple products into one platform, uh, and I and I do think customers are ready for it. Uh, one CISO I talked to said he finally understands the best-in-class threat protection doesn't come from best of breed everywhere, right? In fact, it's suboptimal. So, what does security convergence mean to you, and how is Fortinet addressing that? So this is actually a perfect topic to follow the AI. I want to go back to what we are trying to achieve as cybersecurity vendors and cybersecurity community in general. We would like to create an ecosystem that is able to process data, new data, really, really fast, and then change the entire ecosystem to counter it, sometimes not in the places that it was detected, because the attack will keep transitioning. The beauty of complex attack, you have more places to stop it. Right, yeah. The, the part that you have to take on is move fast enough to be able to collect the data, identify that something has happened, and then make the changes needed to disrupt it. It's really hard to do it if you don't do vendor consolidation. It's not about bringing capabilities into one vendor, it's about the synergy that you have between those capabilities that allow you to reconfigure your entire security cluster based on new data fast enough to stop that attack. Now, while there are multiple vendors that talk platform and consolidation, uh, one of the unique things about Fortinet is you do most of your development in-house. Um, you also, I think your secret sauce, if you will, for years and years, has been your ASIC, right? The security processing unit. So can you just talk a little bit about what benefit that brings you? Yeah, and I want to separate it into two. One is the consistent OS that would run across hardware, VM, yeah, 40, and all of 40 our OS, cloud, yeah. 40 OS, that within it we're able to deliver unified security and management framework that allow you to streamline this detection to respond flows. In addition to that, the ASICs itself allow us to deliver higher performance on hardware capabilities of product that we have, which enable customers to enable on their product more services without performance degradation, which as you know, with all of the decryption that needs to be done and the analysis that needs to be done could create some challenges if you do not have the right hardware capabilities to support this. So it is the knowledge itself that feeds the product, generated by FortiGuard yeah. Labs, that it's consistent across the entire ecosystem, and it's the product themselves that allow you to process more at any given time. Well, I'm glad you brought up performance because I know our world has gone crazy over software. Software stuff, we're going to do everything in software. And software is great, creates a lot of agility, but there are things best optimized in hardware, some optimized in silicon, and some in software. And I think you get a best of all worlds there, right? We do. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our security services are cloud deliver because it allows us to have AI in the cloud at cloud scale. It allows you to create, again, one unified source of data for everything and innovate faster because you don't have to change OSs on a hardware. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you have it there and you have the hard work to run everything on. Okay, so let's talk product. You guys announced a lot of products yes. today. What are some of the product highlights that you just want to call out? The ones that, you know, help deliver this, uh, uh, you know, a little more uh, fulfill on the platform strategy here. So I will, I will do it in several buckets and then we, we can uh, go as deep as needed on each of them. The first one that we talked about and we hear a lot from CISO is the, the convergence of attack between IT and OT. Those used to be separate environments. Right. And we have a lot of innovation across the entire fabric, so it's not a single product like you mentioned that solve OT. It's everything across the fabric that needs to be calibrated for it. And we introduce uh, in our SIM and SOAR, for example, mapping to Purdue model. So now you can see the OT side of the house and IT map to Purdue model, MITRE attack that is ICS specific, threat intelligence that is OT specific, and products who are built to work in rugged, ruggedized product in those more extreme environment as well. So as a whole now you take the entire fabric and put a layer of OT sprinkles everywhere. Oh, yeah. But the unification of your management is for IT and OT. It's one tool that yeah. can give you both. So CISO now see their entire infrastructure and the flows of the attack between different domains that usually were separated. Yeah, and that's one of the trends I've noticed too, is while we've been talking about ITOT for a long time, it seems like it's actually happening, right? So, yes. so I think that was a great overview of product and a little Fortinet vision. I have one last question for you. Right? From a vision perspective, uh, we've been talking about uh, autonomous security or self-driving yes. security or self-healing security for years and years and years. How close are we to having that? We're actually pretty close. Uh, if you go to our website, fortiguard.com, you can see today how our entire fabric is responding to a real-time attack across all of the product that we covered. There is significantly more enhancement in early detection capabilities to allow you to get the information early in the cycle and fix it and mitigate it. Some of the uh, product that we are announced enhancement for in that perspective was, for example, 4D Deceptor. It's a deception mechanism. What you can do today, the moment that we see attack in the wild, we will spin up a decoy for you that will already have the vulnerability that is being exploited. This way you see immediately if someone is playing and trying to yeah. attack you for that specific attack. And we built a community for everyone to share that knowledge faster. So this is one example. Yeah. I think there is a lot of hype and you see it at RSA when you go around external attack surface management and the importance of vulnerability identification in products and in code. We enhance both of this as well. So basically I scan you as if I am an attacker and I tell you how tempting you are uh, for me to go after you. And we will try and close all of those security gaps early. The product like this working in isolation is great, but if you're able to bring this insight and then start enhancing other capabilities that you have, I think this is where we are today. So that's it's an important beautiful. distinction. Your vision of self uh, you know, health or self-defending environment isn't just threat mitigation, but it starts all the way in the preventative yes. aspect as well by trying to identify where those gaps are. In the preventive, yeah. in the training, yeah. so we build specific training for OT, we have specific training for SOC team for full attack, not just how to build a product, because the responsibility of a CISO and what we do as a whole, we try to stop attack, not symptom of the attack, the full yeah. attack as a whole, and the fabric will allow you to get the information needed to make those decisions, and in many cases today, will automate the execution of those decisions for you as well. All right. So we're pretty close. Yeah, okay, well, that's good. So, uh, self-healing coming soon uh, to a network near you, right? Uh, to a security platform near you yes. anyway. So, all right, Corinne. Well, I know I said that was the last question, but I, I lied. I actually have one more for you. Uh, I know a lot of security teams are, have been more focused on identity, right? And I also noticed that in the, all the press releases you sent me that uh, uh, you just announced your cloud NDR, and I believe there was some tie into identity there. So can you talk about that product and how those two, two things come together? Yes, yeah, so we started this conversation with AI and social engineering and the questioning, is this really my employee or is this really a trusted vendor out of my supply chain who's trying to interact with my network? Um, a lot of the capabilities that you bring around identity, authentication, network detection and response are there to help you first validate that the right people are onboarding to your organization and verify them, but also use AI to build model of your typical behavior. 
So as you go in, I'm learning it. And then if I see any deviation from it, I can say, this doesn't look exactly like you. Yeah. Similar, but So not. I work from home every Monday, and then all of a sudden I'm in China or something, then you would notice that. Or, or even if I just work from a different location, you might notice that, right? Or even if you try to yeah. connect to a system in a weird hour, like oh. 1 a.m., why, yeah. why are you Where here? Where I never do that before. You never do this yeah. before. If you try to download a file that is not usually what you interact with, this gives you the extra layer needed to help understand if this is someone who is imitating an employee or a system that is there or a real person. And does that work with IoT important. devices as well? Yes, it yeah. will manage chatters of IoT devices and OT devices. It's managed behavior in general. Thank you for bringing it up yeah. for users or devices as a user. Yeah, because IoT devices actually, while a lot of them are breached, they're very predictable, right? Yes. Like, it's not like a connected printer should ever be talking to your accounting server. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. I can check this use case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Corinne, well, thanks for joining me. I really appreciated the conversation. Uh, good luck with the rest of the event. Uh, on behalf of Corinne, I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another Zcast.